Guys, what is up? Back at you once again. It is ya boy, Chin, that freaking mark. And you know what? A little bit of a PSA before we even crack this bitch open. All I have seen on the Twitter box since last night's Raw is fucking Uso hot. Oh my god, it's the fucking worst thing in the world. Oh my god, it was so fucking funny. Oh my fucking god. People, let me remind you of something. We all were born with these things called opinions. Totally allowed to have them, alright? And here's the other thing about them, is they can fucking differ from time to time. Holy shit, because here's the thing, people also have what's called taste. So, for example, sometimes people aren't always going to like the same thing. Me, as a fan of fucking black metal, I understand that not everybody likes black metal. So when I put on my black metal and people don't like it, I understand that. Just like when you get a segment that is just a big elongated dick joke. Maybe not everyone's gonna like it. Cause for the most part, myself, when it comes to my graps, I like things like NXT where it's kind of fucking gritty and grimy and shit like that. Or maybe even just straight up GCW, CZW where motherfuckers are trying to borderline kill each other. So here's a PSA from your boy Chin, that freaking Mark, once again, to tell you all to shut the fuck up. We can have different opinions. It is okay. I didn't really like that segment, but you know what? Maybe if I go back and watch it, I'll find something that I can like out of it. Because I like the Usos, and I like the Revival. Now that that is out of the fucking way, and has added an extra two minutes onto this video, or whatever the fuck. <laughs> Let's talk about some graps. So opening up this year episode of SmackDown Live, we have AJ Styles, a Raw superstar, reminding us of the whole wild card rule that has been installed now, which is just ridiculous in my opinion, but whatever. In my opinion, whatever. Um, we also have Sami Zayn coming out afterwards, another Raw superstar, and he does his Sami Zayn thing where he just bitches over and over again. Kofi and Xavier come out because they belong on SmackDown, if I'm not mistaken. It's kind of hard to keep up. And he's bitching with AJ because they had a bit of a spat last night. And Sami's just like, I know you're not about to just give him a title shot because that would be foolish, right? And everyone's just like, guys, do you smell something right now? Because... Because, Sami Zayn, if I'm not mistaken, you got thrown in some trash last night, and boy, you smelled like shit. The crowd was even telling him to take a shower. It was kind of funny. This segment ends, though, with Kofi being like, I, I don't give a fuck. I'll challenge anyone. Whoever between the two of you wants a shot, give it to me. I'll take it. And then we come back from a commercial break to find out that Shane has turned that bitch into a triple threat. Wouldn't you know. Next up, we have a match that I was seriously looking forward to, Mustafa Ali versus Andrade Cien Almas. And it was kind of cool because before the match even started, we had like this video promo of Mustafa Ali using like a street light in an analogy for just like chasing the title and shit. It was good because I always like things where we take it away from the ring and just switch it up a little bit. But what I didn't like was when Andrade Cien Almas and Zelina Vega come out, start doing their whole normal thing, right? Zelina's cutting a promo, passes it over to Andrade, and then guess what? What happens from out of the fuck nowhere? That is right, dick move of the night, and it is going to you, the WWE Universe, not all of you, but the ones in particular that seriously started to what chant Andrade Cien Almas, aka the guy who is clearly learning this fucking language, and WWE is like, you know what, you're doing good enough that we're gonna actually start having you talk on the mic, and you have these fucking jackass fans, and they're just doing bullshit like that. Oh my god, that really grinds my gears, let me tell you what. Dick move of the night easily goes to the WWE Universe on that one. Because you know what? If something that dickish wouldn't have happened, it would have definitely gone to what happened following not too long into this match that could have been awesome. Randy Orton just shows up to remind everyone of how fucking big his dick is, just starts RKOing everyone because that's the only fucking move he knows. But when you only have a move that powerful, you only need one. Randy Orton's words, not mine. Next up, we have the start to what is just the motherfucking Shane McMahon hour here. Shane comes out, 
to just hand out the tag team championships because they were relinquished because of Jeff Hardy's injury. Before that, he kind of reminds us of the whole Miz feud, which makes me know that Miz is going to show up later in the night. But basically, he says that he's going to give these titles to a deserving tag team. And guess who comes out? Mother freaking D. Brizzle and Rowan come out. And before I actually get too far into that, let's take a look into the way, way back machine here. But the real question is, what kind of metal shirt is Rowan going to wear to WrestleMania? He's had Creator, he's had Children of Odom, he's had Behemoth. Oh, he's had a Amonomarth too. Sorry, I know that was in there. I'm going to guess that he has a new Amonomarth shirt. Ah, even if it didn't come as soon as I was expecting it to, it's always reassuring to know that you can just call it sometimes, right? Yeah, Rowan had an Amon Amarth shirt on. That's the point here, all right? And then the Usos come out, some more Raw superstars. And they come out to just be like, whoa, 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 whoa squared, all right? It was fucking ridiculous with the woes. And then Shane retorts with, whoa. He's like, yeah, these guys deserve it, so I'm just going to give it to them. And then the Usos pull out probably the line of the night, being like, whoa, you're just going to give these titles to motherfucking SpongeBob and Patrick? To, to Ren and Stimpy? To Beavis and Butthead? Yeah, that got some lulls. You definitely started off with the best one there. They definitely look like SpongeBob and Patrick just chilling there. Led into a match. Yeah, again, we're having ourselves this here match. In mid-match, we have a super awesome dick tease of just the Usos getting the belts. It was one hell of a super kick party going into an Uso splash onto Rowan, but you could kind of tell that Rowan was just going to throw his ass up, and that's exactly what happened. I definitely liked the match. It was definitely probably the best match of the night. And regardless of how many super kicks were delivered, because holy shit, there was a ton of them, it only took one iron claw from Rowan for them to get the titles. And I can't complain about it at all because the match, again, was fan-fucking-tastic. So who gives a shit if the team you wanted to win didn't win because we still got ourselves a decent wrestling match and let's not just always be wrestling fans who fucking bitch about everything. And then, after that, we have ourselves more Shane McMahon because he was standing ringside for that entire match, right? Of course, why would he leave? Shane's cutting a promo, talking about how he has some kind of announcement for Money in the Bank. Yeah, he didn't really. That was just an excuse for him to be vulnerable in the middle of the ring for The Miz to show up. Who would have thought that? And then, yeah, The Miz basically beats Shane's ass all the way up the entrance ramp there. He was pretty pissed. And then from Gorilla Position comes the miz Taraj. I mean the B-Team. Oh my god, who's loyal to who anymore in these industries, right? But yeah, basically the B-Team shows up just to beat down on Miz a little bit. And then, you know what? Shane beats on Miz with a steel chair. There's a little bit of retaliation for you, right? Next up, we have a match that I was getting stoked for, and then I wasn't so stoked for because it just got cut super short and should have definitely got to go at least like three times as long. Whatever. Whatever. Carmella and Amber Moon versus Sony Deville and Mandy Rose. Again, it was way, way too quick. I really wanted to see Ember Moon get back in the ring and just tear some shit down. But rather than see that, I saw Ember Moon take one finishing move from Mandy Rose, and that was it. Match over. Except for after the match, Paige comes out with her new friends, Kyrie Sane and Asuka, to be like, yeah, you guys were relevant when you were hanging out with me. Super sick burn. But yeah, even though we used to be friends, we're not anymore because I upgraded to these badasses over here and you're going to face them next week. So I'm telling you now, bitch, bitches, because there's two of you, you're bitches. Then we have ourselves the main event for the night here, and it is going to be that triple threat match between the house that AJ Styles built, Sami Zayn, just our new heel that we love to hate, and Kofi. Who doesn't love themselves some Kofi? Kofi Kingston definitely does a good job of just taking it to these dudes throughout the match. We get ourselves some take a shower chance still aimed towards Sami Zayn there. We got kind of a double SOS in the middle of the match. Kofi kind of came up on AJ who was trying to do something on Sami and was just like, Kapuya, not today, bitch. Kevin Owens comes out to just basically take out Xavier Woods and tease Sami Zayn getting the roll-up win because, you know, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens have their on-again, off-again relationship there. And it was just Blue Thunder Bomb, Blue Thunder Bomb, Blue Thunder Bomb. I think the only wrestling move in existence that has a fucking color attached to it. Someone please correct me. Man, you know what, Sami Zayn? 
fuck you, because Kofi Kingston's going to prevail. He gets that trouble in paradise, and that's exactly what it was. For Sami Zayn, at least. Yeah, it was trouble because his ass lost. And then after the match is over, Caleb Braxton just comes up from the fuck out of nowhere to be like, Hey, let me, uh, let me ask you something real quick now that you're clearly exhausted from just having a wrestling match. And Kofi was just like, yeah, there is going to be hell to pay for Kevin Owens. Because he's just a man with the shenanigans anymore. So there's some hell to pay for you, Kevin Owens. That's I heard that from Kofi Kingston, so I take his word for it. Guys, and there we go, once again, for another episode of The Graps in a nougaty nutshell. And let me just say it right off the bat, in comparison to what I witnessed last night, I like this episode of The Graps so much more. In fact, that I'm just going to give it a happening Graps. Yeah, uh, uh, and that has been your boy, Chin, that freaking Mark, here talking about some wrestling all right grading some wrestling and there's going to be some more wrestling content coming your way in fact why don't you look out for that new episode of crap graps maybe coming out tomorrow or the day after that who knows by the way diggity's going to be in the house for some nutshell tomorrow and until all of that funness happens da 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 da